guys, how's it going? My name is Shelby and I am here to take you on the craft adventure of the day. Today we are going to make our very own sun catcher hoops. Now I know y'all have probably made sun catchers at some point in time. Maybe not, maybe this is your first one. This is my first sun catcher hoop. I've made sun catchers with colored lasagna noodles, with tissue paper, yeah. Did I flip my camera inside? Oh, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. To piss a load. Ready. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Shelby and I am here to take you on the craft adventure of the day. Today, we are going to be making our very own sun catcher hoops. That's right. I'm sure you've made sun catchers before, but I hope you haven't made them like this. I've made sun catchers with colored lasagna noodles. Very fun. Also made them with tissue paper, but I have never made a sun catcher hoop like we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and make sure that before we get it started on our crafting adventure, you have all the supplies you need for today, okay? Everybody, first of all, should have a little tiny hoop. You should have some black puffy paint. Four colors of glitter glue. They are not probably going to be the exact same as mine, and mine are probably not gonna be the exact same as yours. Just make sure you have four. You should have a pencil, a small suction cup with a little hook on it, a pair of scissors. You might have already used scissors in one of the crafts this week. So if you have, just go get your pair of scissors or if it's included in the bed, awesome sauce. You'll also have a pre-cut piece of wax paper. Now that we have made sure we're all on the same page, we have our crafts. What we're going to do is we got to put on thinking caps. I know it's a little early, but this is a little bit of a do it your own project. So. The first step is you need to decide what do you want to be in your sun catcher, right? It's a big decision. Take a look at your colors, see if it gives you some inspiration. Uh, think about your favorite summer activity, your favorite camp activity, maybe just something really pretty that could be hanging in your window you wanna look at every day, or if you wanna give this as a gift to a friend or a family member, maybe something they like, like a flower or the sun or a beach scene or an ice cream cone. You think of whatever it is you like, Keep it in the back of your mind, get those wheels turning. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and measure out our wax paper hoop, okay? So slide your wax paper to the center. You're going to take your embroidery hoop, your pencil, and on the outside of the ring, not the inside, but the outside, you're going to trace around the hoop with your pencil, okay? Press it down so it doesn't slide away from you. I had that happen before. I was doing a test run and uh, kind of shot off the paper. Then you're gonna pull it away and you just wanna make sure that you can see your pencil lines fairly well. As long as you can see them, great. You might not be able to see mine and that's okay. I can see where mine are at. I'll try and darken them for you. Just make sure you can see yours because this is gonna be our guide as to how big and small we need to draw our picture and to make sure that we put it in the right area, all right? Because if we spend so much time making our photo look absolutely phenomenal and it doesn't fit, it's gonna be a huge bummer, right? Yeah, not fun. So we have traced our circle onto the wax paper and hopefully we've got a couple ideas of what it is we wanna draw. Move your hoop to the side so it's not in the way. I think I'm actually torn. So I really, really love ice cream. Regardless, but I really like ice cream, so I'm debating doing a little bit of an ice cream scene. Or maybe I might do maybe like a flower. Any suggestions? What you think I should do? I have blue, pink, gold, and orange. Hmm. You could also just do a design. I'm gonna throw that out there. You can also do a design. This does not have to be a picture. Um, so, you know what? I think I am gonna just start drawing and whatever comes out, comes out. Sound good? So go ahead and take your pencil. Once you have thought up your design, you're gonna draw inside of your circle only. 
If it goes outside your circle, it's not going to show up in your sun catcher hoop. So keep it in your circle and keep drawing along. Feel free to tell your buddies, or you can yell at me and maybe I telepathically can understand what you're drawing. I'm going to say, feeling hungry today, so I'm leaning towards ice cream. But, you know what? We got that pretty blue, kind of looks like it could be an ocean color. Some gold, you know what, let's do, let's do the sun. So, I'm gonna start with a big circle in the center. Now, if your drawing doesn't come out perfectly the first time, that's okay, you can erase. The wax paper is pretty forgiving, but we're also going to cover it up in, in this glitter glue. So don't stress too much if it doesn't exactly turn out how you want the first time. Uh, we're gonna cover it. You probably won't be able to see it if you do make a mistake. So no stress. That's the best part of summer camp. Stress-free environment. We're here to have fun, hang out with our friends, enjoy, you know, all the different things that we don't always get to do during school because, you know, we have homework and we're learning. We get to enjoy all those fun things. So, just try and enjoy yourself as you do it. I'm drawing all the rays on my son at the moment. Giving my son lots of rays because I'm really feeling this gold and I want to use a lot of it. So if I draw a ton of sun rays, I can use more. <laughs> oh yes, there might be snorting in this video. I forgot to give you a heads up. All right, so I have a sun and a, <laughs> okay, a little bit cliche, but what's cooler than a sun with a smiley face? Gonna give her some big blushy cheeks, a big old smile and sunglasses because it's just ironic. Maybe I have a bad sense of humor. Maybe it's not funny. I think it's really funny. <laughs> I'm gonna give her some sunglasses because that will be awesome. All righty. So I'm not sure how well you can see. Do suns have noses real quick? Maybe. I'll come back to that. I'm debating if my son needs a nose. So I'm gonna add some little shades into my sunglasses. Guys, how are y'all's photos turning out? Your little pictures. Did anybody do just a design, like a mandala or a cool swirly whirly kind of thing? Or anybody do a flower? Please tell me somebody did ice cream or a popsicle. <laughs> I am sure they look great. I would love to see all of them in person because y'all are very, very creative, more creative than I am. And I would love to see how these turn out. So once you have finished your picture, what you're gonna do, push this just a little bit out of the way and you're going to take your hoop and you are going to untwist this little metal piece at the top. It might take a second to loosen it because it's kind of tight and you're gonna unscrew it. So you don't wanna make it tighter, you wanna make it looser. So see how my hoop's getting a little wiggly jiggly? That's what we want. And then once you have enough space, you can throw it on the table like that. You're gonna pull it apart. <laughs> and you are going to take your paper, put it on top of your smallest ring, kind of kind of center your, your picture. So there's gonna be a little bit around the edge where my pencil goes over the wood and that's okay. And I'm gonna put my son in the center and then I'm going to take this hoop. I'm very gently gonna make sure that I can slide it on top of my photo. So it sandwiches the wax paper in between. And then I'm going to twist it the other way and tighten it. So what I want to happen now is I want the hoop to hold the wax paper in place. So once it gets tight enough, you should be able to pick it up and kind of screw it on. That makes it a lot easier. So screw it on, screw it on, screw it on. Don't do it too tight. Once it gets kind of hard to turn, that should be good. If you do it too tight, it might splinter the wood because of the pressure. So just do it enough that it's holding. See, ta-da! Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your scissors and you're just gonna cut off the excess paper. So there's no right way to do this because it is cinched. You can cut really close to your hoop or you can cut further away if you wanna leave a little bit of extra whatever you like. I honestly, fun fact, I'm not really good at cutting with scissors. 
It is not a strong suit of mine. It is something that I try and work on, but I'm just not really good at it. So I, uh, I'm leaving just a little bit of paper and trimming it back up, but I'm not gonna give myself too much of a hard time because it's camp. We're here to have a great time. So put your wax paper to the side once you're finished and your scissors, and you should have your hoop. Ta-da! With your beautiful picture in the center. And most of the excess paper on the sides cut out. So now what you're gonna do is the fun part. You're going to set the black puffy paint to the side, pick up your four colors of glitter glue, and you're just gonna decide what colors you wanna make your picture. And you're gonna start filling it in. So just like you would with paint. So I am going to do gold first. I think I'm going to do the sun rays gold. So go ahead and open your glitter glue. Be careful, you might have had a small explosion like mine did. <laughs> and just go ahead and start painting. Just filling it in like you would. You can make it thick or you can squirt a blob and kind of thin it out. It's totally up to you. And you are just gonna start painting your picture. Use all the colors, use just one of the colors, two, three, whatever you like. And we're gonna go around and fill everything in. Now guys, what is camp without a really good story that's either scary or about a bear, right? So, true story, I was at summer camp one year up in New York. So not, not Texas, far away from here. And I was walking back to my bunk. It was late at night, I was on camp counselors and I had finished my shift for the day. And all of a sudden they hear this noise. And you know, sometimes when you're walking in, in the trees and it's a little dark and you think you hear something, you get a little nervous. That's what I thought had happened. So I didn't think much of it and I kept walking. And I went back and I made it to my cabin. Well, the next day at our morning meeting, they told us that a mama bear and her two baby cubs had moved in to camp. <laughs> the camp food was pretty tasty and I guess they found out where the dumpsters live. So this mom and her babies decided to come move into camp with us for the summer. So what happened was is I think the mom and the babies were at the trash can. That was the noise I was hearing as I walked back to my cabin. So anytime I had to work the late night shift from then on, I would always sing or hum. I'm not very good at whistling. And when I, when I feel a little bit nervous, I don't whistle very well. Well, I don't whistle well at all, but I whistle even worse. So I would sing as I walked back to my cabins. That way the mama bear knew I wasn't gonna bother her. She knew where I was at and I didn't accidentally scare her. And I stayed as far away from the trash cans as possible. But guys, I'm not gonna lie, like she was a big bear. One of my friends had seen her. She didn't bother anybody. She was just trying to feed her babies. Um, but I was a little bit nervous, I'll be completely honest. Has anybody had an encounter like that when they've been camping or just at home where you've seen a bear or maybe a mountain lion? Mountain lions or bobcats are more common down here in Texas. A little scary, huh? It's a little frightening. Catches you off guard. The important thing is to stay calm if that ever does happen. You can make some loud noises. A lot of animals don't like loud noises. It scares them. So just make some loud noises. Make yourself look really big, stick your arms up real tall, kind of growl. And uh, I know that sounds crazy, but what you want to do is show them that you're bigger than they are. So that way they kind of are like, oh, you know, I don't want to mess with them. But nine times out of 10, if you see anything like that, they're going to be so scared of you. They're just going to run away anyway. They're not going to want to be around you. So if you do encounter any wildlife this summer, stop, be smart. Try and make some noises, see if it scares them away. If not, just make yourself look really, really big. Think of the biggest person you know and try and look like them. <laughs> and I'm sure whatever it is that you see will go on its way. Unless it's a snake. Guys, snake stories. Snakes are different. I would say just run away. That's my own personal advice. <laughs> I know not all snakes are mean, but snakes are not my jam. I'm very fearful of snakes. We were camping one year and there was a diamondback rattlesnake, which was really cool. It was very cool. We were actually driving down the road and we saw something, so we slowed down. It was a it was a road that not a lot of cars actually drove on. It was in the campgrounds. And um, 
there was this diamondback rattlesnake and it was very angry. It kept hissing at the tires on our car. Was not thrilled we were there. So we left it alone, drove by, but it was neat. But curious, are any of you out there actually snake fans? Like you really enjoy snakes and you think they're really cool? Okay, you know, to each their own. I'm not, but you know what? We don't all like just vanilla ice cream. We don't all just like chocolate chip cookies. So I'm glad that everybody has a little bit of different taste. All right, guys, I got the rays on my son done in gold. Oh, and I pulled the lid off my glitter glue. That's pretty funny. Next, I think, maybe, maybe I'll do its face. Ooh, in orange. Okay, so fun fact, sometimes the glitter glue shoots across the table. So just be warned. It's a little messy. <laughs> so we've talked about some of our interesting animal encounters at camp. What about funny camp stories? Does anybody have any funny camp stories? Like maybe you went to a camp and your friend did something funny or you dressed up like Sasquatch and scared them? Or do you maybe uh, have a funny story of something that happened to you at camp? So I had gone camping with my cousins and we were up in the panhandle of Texas. Any panhandle people out there? Yeah? We had gone up there and we took my cousins with us and one of my cousins does not camp. She does not like to really do outdoor things. To eat your own, it's just not a thing. She doesn't enjoy it very much. Well, we were tent camping. And guys, do you know what she did? She got out of the tent to blow her nose. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what a tent is made out of? That's right, it's kind of like a canvas tarp material. It's very, very thin. And she got out of it and it's see-through for the most part. If you could put your eyes real close, like you can see through it. And you can hear everything that happens through it to get to blow her nose, which I thought was hilarious. Cause I'm like, well, the tent's already kind of see-through. Why would you do that? So anyway, she gets out to be nice and blow her nose. You wanna guess what happened? As soon as she got out to blow her nose, these coyotes started howling, and I mean loud, like super loud. And it just scared the ever-living daylights out of her. And she got so scared, she went to run and jump into the tent, but her knees got stuck on the lip where the zipper goes, and she fell face first into the tent on her sleeping bag and shot across the entire tent. It was hysterical. She was okay. That's why I felt it was okay to laugh. But guys, it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. From that night on, she did not get out of the tent to blow her nose. <laughs> And the coyotes went on their way and they didn't bother anybody, but I just thought it was absolutely funny. It was perfect timing. I don't think they could have had any better timing if they would have tried. Not at all. I hope this does not discourage any of you from going camping. Camping is very fun. So if you're afraid of animals, don't worry. They have never bothered us in all the times we've gone camping. We just have lots of funny stories about things that happen and seeing them. Because you're actually in their land. You go out camping, most campsites are out in kind of a rural area, so they're not gonna be in the city. And a lot of animals live out there and that's their space. So, you know, just be respectful of their space, how you'd want them to be respectful of yours. And they'll leave you be. And it's cool to see them in a different environment. I mean, how often do you get to see coyotes up close? Or rattlesnakes where you feel safe, but they're, you know, out in their natural habitat. They're not just locked up at the zoo, it's neat. Dun, 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 dun. Guys, how are y'all's pictures coming along? They looking great? I am sure they are looking really, really wonderful. I'm hoping mine look just a little bit as cool as y'all's. Yeah, I will say, I do love me some glitter glue action. So I'm really enjoying this part. So other fun things at camp. You have funny stories, fun activities. So I know normally camp looks a little bit different. There's all sorts of different things to do, like the pool or archery, maybe the zip line. What is your most favorite thing to do at camp and why? Feel free, you can tell me through the video or you can tell somebody who maybe is doing this with you 
or it could just be a topic of conversation for dinner tonight or whenever you hang out with your friends next. But what is your most favorite thing to do at camp? I love whenever you get to make s'mores. Like I said earlier with the ice cream, I'm a huge foodie and I love making s'mores. And now I think, I personally think there is one right way to make s'mores. The way I like to make s'mores, y'all get ready for this. I did finish my picture, guys. Ta-da! So I got them all glued in, so I'm gonna give them just a second to settle. Keep working on yours. If you need to work on yours, you can add some finishing touches if that's what you need. Um, I'm gonna give mine just a second to set. If you're finished, go ahead and take a second for yours as well. But the best way, I think, to make s'mores, is you have to take your marshmallow. Put it on your stick, get it ready. Stick another marshmallow on top because s'mores really need two marshmallows. So your bite of marshmallow to chocolate to graham cracker is proportionate. That means equal. You're gonna open your graham crackers over here and you need two pieces of Hershey on one graham cracker, two pieces of Hershey on another graham cracker. And then you're gonna take your marshmallows, wait for it. And then you're going to light them on fire in the campfire. That's right. I know, I know, I know. Some people don't like their marshmallows cooked on s'mores. Some of you are like, ew, gross. <laughs> it has to be golden brown. Golden brown's a good option. I love to burn my marshmallows, blow them out <sighs> till they're nice and black and crispy. Stick them in the center and pull them off because it's like the perfect amount of meltiness. And then when you eat your s'more, the heat from your once fiery marshmallow just melts the chocolate down and it's I feel like I could eat an entire meal of s'mores. Now I know some of you are grossed out and you say that's the wrong way to make a s'more, to each their own. You make s'mores however you want, but that's just what I think is right. Just gonna say. All right guys, so we finished our pictures. If you're still working, no worries, take your time. We're gonna go ahead and if you finish, you're gonna take your black puffy paint, unscrew the lid. It's kind of a weird shaped lid. Looks like a flower because it's called Tulip Brand. <laughs> and you are just gonna add black paint wherever you want. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to outline all my glitter glue with black paint so it stands out a little more. Because remember, this is a sun catcher. So when we stick it in our window, if we're really far away, we might not be able to see it as well because the colors might blend in. Like I have this, this gold and this orange that are kind of similar. So if I outline it in black, it might make it stand out a little bit more, okay? Now, if you can, I would not pick up or tilt your glitter glue yet. It will run if you hold it upright for too long. Granted, glitter glue is really thick, so it'll take a while before it starts to slide, but go ahead and leave it flat on the table if you can. All right, so just a, a tip. Take your black puffy paint and go ahead and just start adding any decorations or outlines or whatever you want, or if you don't want to use the black at all, that's fine. It's totally up to you. This is your project. You make it how you want. So be careful not to stick your hand in the glitter glue you've already done. And I'm just gonna go around. Kind of reminds me of icing cookies. I love to ice cookies. Oh, fun fact on s'mores, guys. If you ever wanna spice up your s'more and do something different, if you have Reese's and you like Reese's cups and you're not allergic to peanut butter, you can take the Hershey's chocolate out and stick a Reese's in there instead, and then you have like a peanut butter chocolate s'more. And it is delicious, it's so good. So, I encourage you, if you make any s'mores this summer, spice it up, switch it out, try something new, send me your ideas of what I can try that's new too, please, I would love that. It's part of the fun of summer and camp and crafting is you can just take something and put a twist on it and make it your own. Alrighty. Going around. So I ended up doing the sun, I think, because if I did the ice cream, I was gonna be too hungry. And then also I love summer. Summer is probably my favorite season. And I love summer when it's not super crazy hot, like it gets in Texas, like 120 but I love it when it's hot and sunny and you can just spend the day out by the pool with your friends or family or whoever you like to go to the pool with or if you want to go to Six Flags. I love that. I think it is the absolute best. That's why I chose 
to do the sun in the end. Does anybody else love summer? Is that your favorite season? Yeah, that's okay. Some I know some people like spring, fall, winter. All right, so we're gonna keep adding our black edging on and be careful as you can see if you touch it and it's wet uh it does smear a smidge which is okay like it's an original art piece this means nobody else's will look exactly like mine <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and i'm just gonna put the finishing touches on here there we go and then last but not least, guys, we are going to want to leave this to dry for a few hours. I don't mean like one hour. I'm talking maybe even four. So from like lunchtime to dinner time, or maybe if it's an afternoon, right before you go to bed and check it. And you want to leave it drying flat. If you leave it hanging up, gravity is going to pull that heavy glue down, and then it'll probably look a little smudgy like mine, which is totally fine. It looks cool, too. So go ahead and give it all a really long time to dry. Fast forward a few hours, once it is dry, you're gonna take your suction cup and you are going to put the hook through this metal piece and you can suction cup it wherever you want in your house. It could be on a mirror, it could be in a window. Mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, cousin, whoever uh, that you stay with or ride in their car says it's okay, you could hang it up in the car and you can show the world your beautiful creation. Well, guys, I hope you have had a great time. This is honestly probably one of my favorite activities that I've done. I think it's so cool. You can make it really, really unique to any holiday, any season. You could do a birthday. You could do a, an initial or a letter. You can do anything. I hope you have had a blast, too. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you later.